Ireland. Hi everybody and welcome to the Dawn Jarvis show where our goal is to inspire you by interviewing a diverse range of visionary leaders and entrepreneurs and sharing their entrepreneurial journey. Today we have a very special guest, my coach Carmelita Nuttall. Carmelita is known as the world's number one rock star international speaker. She's an influencer and founder and CEO of Event of Champions and a multi-millionaire property investor, business and wealth coach. She's a seven times award-winning sales and growth expert, entrepreneur, author, and editor-in-chief of Global Champions magazine and radio show at the Carmelita podcast. She works with top CEOs who earn six, seven, eight, and nine-figure sums to increase their wealth and profit, expand their business, launch or relaunch their brands, big ideas and create workable systems through strategic planning. She has built sales teams of thousands in over 330 countries and did in excess of $20 million in sales. She's been featured in Forbes and in Think and Grow Rich and appeared on many programs and the media. Her dedication to leading by example, constantly evolving and succeeding by raising others up has led to a global network of global champions. Carmelita, it's fantastic to see you. How are you? Oh, Dawn, thank you for that introduction. You know, I'm listening to you and I'm listening to the introduction and I'm tired, like I've done a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done so much, haven't you? You've done so much. It's it's very, very impressive. And we're going to be talking about mindset and mm. how you've created your multi-million pound business and how that, you know, how that having that money mindset has yeah. Um, led you to achieve such such success in so many areas but first of all I want to ask you about your journey and about how you've got to where you are today. Oh Dawn the journey started off in the Caribbean in Trinidad if you've ever been to the Caribbean you know it's all beautiful. It's very beautiful. It is. Uh, struggling through school at the age of 13 my father said to my mother we no longer have money you're not going to attend secondary school. So my mother said, we will find a way. And so my yeah. mother and I, at the age of 13, Dawn, went on the public dump, dug through rubbish to get glass bottles to sell just so I could attend secondary school. Because my mother would always say, you need education, you know, do something with your life. Look at my friend, she's doing this. So look at this one, they have that. At least do that so at least you, you don't have to be where you are because I'm the last in 11 children. And we grew up really poor. And I, all I saw around me was poverty, but I also saw bits of people that with money and I was like, well, 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 why do they have money like well, what, what do I need to do to be like them um so I really studied uh, hard in school uh and then decided to come to England to finish my law degree that's a whole other story slept on people's sofas you name it trying to go to school he's in conflicts with dinner every day but I just really wanted I wanted I wanted more to what I knew and to what everybody else was experiencing and so I really pushed through every obstacle, whether it was homelessness or whether it was lack of money or just having conflicts at dinner or just begging for money to go to school. Like I just did whatever I could to be where I am now. That's, that's a story of remarkable resilience. And um, I've been having conversations with people um, from the Caribbean this week. And um, I didn't know that you were one of 11. Um, and my dad was one of nine. Wow. And um, I've been talking about with people about, mm. you know, how determined people had to be to leave the Caribbean for something. And that sort of mindset of achieving against all odds and coming to mm. a place where, it, what you didn't know where you're gonna you were gonna sleep necessarily or where you were gonna work or mm -hmm. how it was gonna be and that the determination and resilience that you know a whole um you know I, I want to say empire but that's the wrong word <laughs> no but it's a community of people from the Caribbean mm -hmm. that came to this country or you know went to America and you know yeah. to have that entrepreneurial spirit even regardless of whether you built a business which you have or not but actually to sort of like I'm not sure I know where I'm going I'm not sure what's yeah. going to happen when I get there yeah, but yeah. I know I'm going to make it work because there's almost yeah. no choice and I and I feel that that has been passed down in you know so you know if you decide a goal it's got to work because there's no choice yeah. really you have to make it work so I really I really like that yeah. story and and 
I suppose I want to know, so how did you decide that you were going to be a business owner and that was your story? Because you, you studied law, but you didn't practice and you became a business owner. How did that work? Well, I tell you, Dawn, I did not tell my mother. <laughs> <laughs> how did I tell my mother she worked so hard? And then tell my mother, mommy, I left law school. Yeah. I'm now starting in, in, in direct sales of all places. But I just, I, I remember looking at my mother going up the hill in the latrine, the Jamaicans call it the outhouse. If you, if you see, really? the, you know, those yes. people that are poor and, and they yes. have an outhouse where they go, that's what my mother, so I'm in England, trying to finish law school, and my mother going up the hill in, to go to an outhouse. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I, I need to do something else. So I looked at my lecturers and they weren't making the kind of money I wanted to make. And I'm like, there must be something else to this. So I heard about the industry of direct sales, corporate sales, and I thought, right, I can do, I can do, I can sell. You can. I can do that, <laughs> I can do that. But I really wanted to do it done because I wanted to help my mother. I really wanted to give, get something that was bigger, better, faster to help my mother. And so I heard about this corporate sales, direct sales, and I thought, I don't want to do law anymore. Like, I'm just going to, I'm going to forget that. And I'm going to focus on building a business and building a brand. And I tell you, the lessons that you learn in building a business is even more priceless than the money that you earn. The lesson, I'm going to say that again, the lessons that you learn and building a business is even more priceless than the money that you earn. So the lessons that I learned are all about tenacity and about, you know, keeping going, but sort of always remembering where I've come from, always remembering why I'm doing what I'm doing. It wasn't for money. Initially, it was to help my mother. Then it was to get into financial freedom. Then it's always to help the other person because money is a byproduct of you giving value. So yeah. once you have that in perspective, even when it, it gets hard, you tend to still keep pushing and you still keep going. So for me, leaving law school wasn't a major because I knew what I, why I was doing it. Uh, I didn't want to be like my lecturers. And I also wanted to, I wanted to have more so I can give more. I can, whether it's through teaching or training, whether it's through giving back to my mother, I just wanted to have more so I can give more. And, and sort of being in that realm said, you have to change. But as I said, the biggest lesson for me was, what you learn in becoming an entrepreneur, how, how, you, how you change more than the bank balance. Literally, people equate is just about the money. For me, it's about how you develop more than the money. I, I really, I like that. And um, and it's, it's interesting. Um, so, you know, my parents came from Jamaica, your parents, you know, you come from Trinidad and Tobago, and there is a, a sort of running theme of poverty um, that people have come from. And there's also um, potentially a scarcity mindset, yes. isn't there? So I'd love you to talk to us about, you know, how you change your mindset about mm. money, because you must have had to do that. And I know you talk oh. about value and valuing yourself and, you know, knowing your worth. But, you know, that is quite a shift from mm -hmm. looking in the rubbish dump to mm -hmm. being a multimillionaire property investor. So let's talk about the mindset of how you got mm. to them. Don't want to tell you. My biggest challenge was to believe in me. I'll tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Not making more money. Like I could, I could make more money. My biggest challenge was believing in me. Looking at the fact that I'm a woman. I'm black. I'm from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. uh, my English isn't like Dawn's English. You know? <laughs> this, was, this is true. This, I, looked, I looked internally. Like why, how, how, why should you succeed? You know? And I internalized it. Yeah. And, and that, that little voice was always at the back of my head who do you think you are mm -hmm. to do this who do you think you are to do that mm -hmm. and I had to stamp out that voice every single day by action you know I was talking to my team recently and action dispels fear action dispels the noise the more you get into action doing what you're doing the more the noise stops like the noise you hear the noise but it's, it's sort of fading in the distance but that was one of the biggest challenges because all of my family live in Trinidad I'm the only one that's doing what I'm doing and another thing John that was a really big challenge for me you know most of us have a fear of success or failure mine was success it was never failure because I would do anything it was on why it was success because I thought um if when I become rich when I become successful how will I look in front of my family are they going to judge me and, and and I wouldn't be able to talk to them and feel like I'm better than them you know I think that was a hard part for me as well I had to realize that I am me and that I am different and I am the one doing the work and I am the one deserve the success. 
because I'm the one putting in the work and not be afraid of what they would think because they're not doing what I'm doing. So that was another big challenge. How I dealt with those two mentally, Dawn, I read every single day. I read like five books a month. Literally, I listen to motivational stuff every single day. I align myself with winners, thinkers, believers, and I got rid of losers, mourners, whiners, and complainers because I knew I needed to be around that, that, that whole system in order for me to change more than anything else. You know, for things to change, I must change, you must change. So in order to do that, I had to keep empowering the mind. And it, it was, all the, all the craziness was going on up here. It wasn't about the work ethic. Like anybody could work. Everybody has 24 hours in a day. Everybody could work if they want to work. The difference between the winners and the losers, the winners believe. And the winners don't just believe by talk, they believe by action. So whatever I believed in my head, what someone said to me, the good, I acted upon that belief. And the more I acted upon that belief, the more I believe. And then I realized that I am different. I am not like my family. They don't yeah. have the drive and determination like me. And I just need to get on. And I tell you, that being doing that done over every single not every week, not every month, every day uh -huh. changed my mindset. I really love that actually. And um it's it's so there's a few things coming up for me there. There is the unacknowledged and I think you're the first person who said it out loud mm. that being successful coming from a Caribbean background has some impact on people from the Caribbean and how they perceive you mm. I know this is true I have experienced it you're the first person who said it out loud and if I had time I'd do a doctorate on that particular <laughs> thing <laughs> because it is it is everything isn't it so yes. you know it is everything how you know how you relate to people sending mm -hmm. money you know and their perception of you as the mm -hmm. uh, as a rich person and relatively that is true and then there's also this thing about so do I feel guilty about that do I feel yes. guilty about how hard I have worked yes and and one of the things I think is that and that this is definitely true for you mm. is you're an outlier you're not normal you're not you've done something different to a run of the mill and I think yes. it's okay to accept that and yes. to when you're having those thoughts and when you're thinking those things to remember that there are always outliers and there are mm -hmm. always people that do different things and there are always people that with the same circumstances will choose mm -hmm. a different path mm -hmm. and that's okay and I think so to um acknowledge that and accept that is part of the thing around mindset around money would you agree Carmen? absolutely you, you've got to acknowledge it you've got to acknowledge that you're different mm -hmm. you've got to acknowledge that that the other people haven't done the work you have you got to acknowledge that you can't go down to their level they need to come up to yours because you worked to go up they shouldn't you, they, you shouldn't be going down to meet them where they are they need to come up to where you are and it's difficult because you kind of, we have, especially as women, you know, we want to save everybody, we want to help everybody, we want to, we yes. want to, we want to treat everybody right, we want to feed everybody, you know, that's, that's how we are. I have learned to say no. I have yeah. learned to say N-O, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've learned that my life is different because of choice. Their life is different because of choice. And we all have a choice. And my mother would always say, we all have a choice. We all have a choice. There's a, there's a scripture that says, choose life. It means whatever, whatever life means to you, choose something better, choose something different. And I think we all, a lot of us, especially from, from the Caribbean, or especially, especially women, we feel uh, guilty. I don't anymore. I'm sorry. I'm going to buy whatever I want to buy because <laughs> I work 16 hours a day when yeah. you go on the beach. Trust me. Trust me, that's true. That's very true. And there are some decisions to be made and some choices to be made, aren't there, around that? And I guess your path is, well, it will be determined by those decisions and those choices um, that you've made. So I really like that, Carmelita. And thank you so much for that. And that was um, quite it resonated with me a lot as well. Now, you've written um a few books and and this is and some of the books titles are some of those things we're going to talk about today so we were going to talk about also how to fast track your success which is also a title of one of your books so I suppose um it would be good to talk about sort of like you know how you know you how do you I'm going to write a book about how to fast track your success because you've had success and you've shared it with people and sort of like what process sort of like what model what journey do you go through to fast track your success well I tell you what you know what I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna say it I'm just gonna read from the ebook so you, you can <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna read from the book so you have it um and if you want to go to Camelita shop 
and you can get the ebook there as well. On my mm -hmm. website, you get a couple of chapters free. These are the things in which I have done. So when people ask me, how did you do what you did so fast? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a quote that says it takes 12 years to become an overnight success. We all know yeah. that. Nobody saw For the real. last 12 years. Yeah. yeah. Nobody saw the nights when you lie on your bed, when you lie on your sofa, asking what the heck am I doing? And you're crying. Nobody saw that. But when you, you launch, everybody's like, wow, you know, this is what you did. This is what that I did. And so I'm going to just read the bullet points to fast track your success. Focus only on income generating work. Everybody busy being broke. Your job is to focus on what generates the most money, least amount of time, least amount of effort, most amount of profit. Learn the difference between a customer plan and a business plan because it's all about the customer. Utilize my most important tip for massive growth and success. And it's ask. We, yeah. and that, that, I could do a whole day seminar, I'll just do with ask. Find ways to constantly sell. Go from the top down, get to level five. I mean, the list, there's so much in here. And my favorite one, is if it's not making money, it's not making sense. Because I see so many people, they're busy being broke, they're pretending that they're doing the business. I say to them, make up your mind. Is it full-time, part-time, not sometime? Because <laughs> if you do it sometime, you'll get sometime money. So in order to fast track your success, you've got to guard every single thing you do. Guard your time more than anything else. Like I will give away money. Okay, don't ask me for the money. But I will give up the money. <laughs> I will not give you my time. Yeah. Because with time, I can make more money. Mm -hmm. So you've got to guard your mind, guard your time, focus on what generates the most money, least amount of time, least amount of effort, most amount of profit. You've got to make sure that you are going to the top down, go to the experts, all the things in which the people that get there quicker, if you want to fast track your success, that's what you've got to do. And you know what? You've got to do it every single day. Um, I totally agree. And, uh, you know, that is, you know, you know, we've had those discussions, haven't we, really, about, you know, scheduling your time, being focused on, being very focused on what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not necessarily going to happen overnight, you know, and I think the 12 year thing is, it's true, isn't it? It takes mm -hmm. a long time. I would say to encourage people that, you know, that, you know, you could be in year six, or year 10 of your yeah. overnight success. So, you know, don't be disheartened by that. But it's it's definitely about having goals, isn't it? And talking about goals, I wanted to talk about your book, How to Launch a Big Idea, mm. because that is sort of the genesis of, you know, where yeah. you you will go to fast track your sets because you, I guess you have to mm. look at your idea really and look at, you know, what skills and things that you have that can make that happen. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Comment. I just, and I just want to reiterate this one as well. Some people say as it takes 25 years yeah. to be an overnight success. Some people say 12. I say it takes a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about launching a big idea. Every single one of us has got something in us that we all, we want to bring to the world. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a socks. Okay, it literally could be a new hair care product. Yeah. It could be, you know, a, a, a pattern, an NFT, you know, whatever it is. We all have things that we want to bring to the world to enrich the world. In the process, we become enriched with it. Okay, but then a lot of people like like stuck. Well, what do I do? Well, how do I bring this to the world? How 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 do I make this? So my couple of tips I'm going to give you here in how to launch a big idea, and you can find the book again on Camelie to Shop, is what I have done to launch multi-million dollar uh, MLM businesses in the past. It's what I did to launch my property business. It's what I did to launch Event of Champions, to launch the company. This, uh, the launches are almost exactly the same. Your job is to stick to it, follow it to the letter. So I'll give you a couple of things, what you can do to launch a big idea. Number one, what do you need to have in place? You need to make a list. Make, don't just think it's gonna happen. Make a list of what you need to have in place. If you're doing it offline, online, cross-line. Where are your contracts? Where are the trademarks? Where are the legal? you got to protect your own backside, I see, okay? Mm -hmm. Also, you got to plan the divorce before the wedding. you got to know what you got to know. So you yeah. make sure the contracts, the trademarks, the legal in place before you go and buy any domain name, before you yeah. go and put it out there on, on, in a big, on, let me just talk about the domain. Make sure you got a domain. <laughs> Don't just put it. Make sure you got a domain, please. Listen, you're going to launch this, make sure you got a domain or, or some sort of, of it. Okay, what do you need to learn or who do you need to hire? Because you will need to either learn something or get somebody who can do it. How much is it going to cost? Where's the money going to come from? Is it going to come from friends, family, loan, bank of mom and dad? You need to decide. Again, comes back to the customer plan, 
What's his business plan? You're going to write that down. Who is doing the marketing? Who is doing the branding? Who is doing the sales? Because remember, if it's not making money, it's not making sense. What is your big why? Why are you doing it? I mean, there's so many other things that are in there to launch. And then the day of the launch, what happens on the launch day? You need a build up to that day. What happens? Because remember, guys, this is not just some little thing that you, you're planning. This is your time. You kind of get back that time. This is your life. This is something that you are bringing to the world that will enrich the world. Every single company, especially from 2006 to now, you're looking at Airbnb, Lyft, 4G, all of these companies, 5G now, all of these companies didn't exist before 2006. They all had an idea, but they all had to launch. They all had a plan. They all had a day. You don't know where your idea will take you. It may look small now, but you don't know, but launch it well. Do it well and do it good one time. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. That was, um, you know, um, I do encourage people to buy the book um, and to, you know, if they want to sam sample it, they can get three chapters free on your mm -hmm. website at the shop section of your website. However, you know, it is, um, I have actually used this formula myself when I launched, um, when I launched my own book and, you know, I'm going to be using it going forward as well. It is um, really important to get support as well though, isn't it? Mm. It's crucially important. Guys, look, at the end of the day, you know, we know all know the African proverb, okay? You want to go where you want to go, go alone. You want to go longer, go, go with people. You know, go with your neighbor, go with your cousin, go with a coach, a mentor. You, 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 there are people on this planet to help you. There are people who've gone before you. They know what to do and more importantly, what not to do. So your job is to align yourself with winners, believers, thinkers, people who are going to take you where you need to be. You need support. Look, look, Don. Just a few days ago, I called up my best friend, Alfred, and I said, Alfred, I'm feeling a bit down. I've got this going on, that going on, this going on, that going on. I just need to talk to somebody. I need some clarity. And I was able to talk to him. I call him my only girlfriend. He laughs. <laughs> I was able to talk to him and just share. I needed support. We mm -hmm. all need support. Find somebody who is doing what you want to do and just ask for help. Do not be afraid. You need support. You need help. And ask. My acronym for ask is always seek knowledge. So find someone. Ask. Love that. I love that actually. And that's so fantastic. And very, and very true. Um, no man is an island. And no man um does it alone, do they? Mm. They do it with um support and whether mm. you know you, you know you can look for support within your own networks, but also you can, as you said, find someone who's doing what you want to do. Right. You know, ask for mentorship, ask for coaching, mm. ask, you know, pay for it if you need to, because it will it will pay dividends and actually mm. make it quicker to get to your goal and that's one of the things that i believe um so um so some people have you know they've started their business yeah you know they've launched you know it's going um it's tickety boo but you're a great believer and i totally agree with this too and it's actually one of the things that drew me to you that's mm -hmm. important to have multiple streams of income mm -hmm. and you've written a book about this too mm -hmm. and it's one, <laughs> one of the themes of our podcast as well is sort of like you know so you know some of the listeners here will be established business owners you know yeah. they, and but and but and it's it is hard to get started it yeah. is hard to sort of but you know then, then you start and you and you're doing it and that's cool and then you know the next step is to sort of like have multiple streams of income so you're not yes. relying just on one so right. talk to that us about that come later like don the, that that for me is like if, if this is the one thing i want to leave in this world before i leave is that I want to encourage every single person to create multiple incomes. And I'll tell you why. And I'll give you an example of what happened to me yesterday, the day before yesterday. Um, my mother fell years ago. And when she fell, nobody was around. I think my, my brother or somebody came after and they had, she had to wait on the floor up going up the hill, that same hill. And I couldn't go to Trinidad and look after her because I didn't have multiple incomes. I was working in my business rather than on the business. And I will never forget that time when my sister called and she said, mommy fell down and, you know, nobody was there to help and I couldn't go. And I just felt, I said, Lord, this will never happen to me again. I am going to do whatever it takes to be in a position to not have to depend on one income. You know, Warren Buffett talks about whatever you do, take the time to build two, three, four, five incomes. And it's not easy to do, let me tell you, but it's so rewarding in the end. 
you got to take the time off to do it. And that's why I'm so passionate now. I've got over 12 income streams. I'm so passionate now to do this. And I teach every single client. As soon as you start your business, the number one thing you want to do is create something where you can have residual income from. Number one. Number two, when you start earning money, put aside some of that money every month into an income generating asset. So that money, that brings an income as well. Because you never know what can happen. I think the pandemic, if nothing else, has taught all of us, we should have one on one income. Like so many people that I know who are speakers and coaches and trainers, they, they had to go and find a job that they didn't want to do because all they had was one thing. And they look at me and they say, Come, I wish I had done what you did. But I've been teaching you guys this for years. Why, 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 why didn't you do something about it? So before I go and talk about four or five ways in which you can create multiple incomes, now I want to give you one last story. Okay. I saw Dawn, my consultant surgeon. I had a major surgery a couple of years ago. And I saw my consultant surgeon uh, two days ago. And um, just went for a checkup. And I just was talking to him about, you know, how, how he's, you know, how he's, uh, how, what, what is he doing now and blah, blah, blah. While he did the surgery on me, okay? This guy saw everything, if you understand what I mean. I do. All I right. do. This guy did the surgery on me. Um, and while I, I came off, I was in the bed for seven days while he was attending in a private hospital, of course, he, he, what do you do? I said, well, I do this and I do that. And I also invest in property because, you know, as we said, he said, I've always wanted to do that. People told me I should do it, but I, I didn't know what to do. I said, let me give you a crash course. This is on my bed with, with, with my <laughs> tubes all over in pain. See, uh -huh. the guy saw every part you can think of. And I'm telling him to invest in property. When I saw him two days ago, he said, I listened to you. I bought a big manor house and I, I've got de developed seven flats. And I've got space to build two houses at the back. And I have residual income other than me being a surgeon. I said, thank, I said, I felt, he said, and all that, all thanks to you. I felt so good because I thought somebody actually listened. Because even though he was a surgeon, he is making good money, one of the best in the country. But yet he listened and understood the power because anything could happen, guys, in life, anything. And your little residual income may start from $10 a month, $50 a month, $100, pounds or euros a month. It will go up to 300, it will go up to 500, it will go up to 5,000, it will go up to 10,000. And gradually, at the beginning, you think oh, $5, $10 is not a lot of money. Your job is to be patient. Because when the mess hits the fan, and it will, you will be glad for that extra residual income. So let me give you a couple of things to do to create multiple incomes. Find multiple ways, number one, of selling the exact same brand product or service you're selling right now. Find multiple ways. Because there is somebody who wants to buy it at $100. And there's someone who wants to buy it at $10,000. Okay, that's number one. Number two, create information products. Something that you could sell, a book, a program, anything. Anything you could sell other than what you're selling right now. Number three, start a month membership, a monthly program. Everybody save the whale, save everybody. Everybody paying into something every month. <laughs> Why? Why? Because we all want to belong. Yeah. Start selling something, start a podcast, start selling, start charging for, I mean, start investing in property, convert your garage, rent that out. I mean, it doesn't matter. Just do it now because there's going to come a time you wish you did it now. For real, for real. And, you know, so it is so true is that it's um, really, really important to have um, multiple streams of income. And as you said, if you even if it's ten pounds a month, or ten dollars, or fifteen dollars a month, it will it will add up. I've got a little story about um, my children. I've got two children; they're in their twenties now. And um, when they were born, um, I did a bond for them at ten pounds mm. a month that they would have when they were twenty one. Because somebody told me that they had got it. Um, um, one of my nursing friends told me they'd got something from their grandma when they were 21 so I did that at 10 pounds a month and um, the, you know my daughter will be 21 in um, July actually and my son got his money already and you know it 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 was it wasn't a, it was at, at times it was a sacrifice depending on which part of my life I was in because I've had I've had times when I haven't had much money but um you know it was actually so gratifying mm. to be able to give them that that gift and it was based on that so my granddad um gave me 21 uh, driving lessons for my 21st birthday and Aww. that's the reason I did it they didn't spend it on 21 driving lessons but you know that is up to them <laughs> but you know that was the idea behind it and the the thing around it is that I always tell the story that when I was 18 
someone said to me it'll save 25 pounds a month and um that and that was quite a lot of money at that time for 10 years and at the time when I was 18 I couldn't imagine being 28 Mm -hmm. I'm now 55 years old so you know time passes and you know the time to start is now and that's I would share that and to have different things you know you can have your profession you can have you know well all knowledge is great but also to have different things and be able to use that so I think the combination of those ideas of, of you know having the mindset you know having a big idea then fast tracking to success and also then thinking about how can you diversify and have um multiple streams of income is all about what you are about isn't it Carmelita basically would you agree it is it is because and it's because of my my own journey guys it's because of my own story I, I I passionately share this information because I know if people implement it their lives will be better and 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 like what you're doing Dawn with the podcast and all these other things when you impact one person you yeah. impact a lot more than you think so when you implement this for yourself how many more people are going to be benefiting across the globe with your content, your information? So do it, do it now, do it for your sanity. We never know what can happen in life. I think the pandemic has actually said to all of us, everything could go crazy at some point. Absolutely. You will need to plan for that craziness. Exactly. And I suppose, you know, the pandemic has definitely taught us, um, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow mm-hmm. and feast mm-hmm. the day. And if not now, when are you going to do it? So that's what I would say about that. And um, I always ask all of my guests, um, because I'm a nurse, I'm very caring, obviously, about <laughs> how they both, because, you know, you, you've you got a very busy life. Now, I, I'm in your life and I know how busy you are. <laughs> and um, that, you know, so you're, you're, you know, I would say you're constantly spinning plates, you know, you're here, there and everywhere, but you're fitting it all in. So I want, um, if you could share with us, you know, how do you stay focused, positive and productive? so that you can do all of these things focused I have a list Mm -hmm. I have my goals and I can see them and I know what I need to achieve so that's for me the focus the focus is there focus for me is also my mother I would call her mommy what you need so I have a focus the focus has to be on okay what 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 can I do for my mother first Um, for me focus is about what do I want to have happen when? And I need, and I'm super, super, super clear on all of those things. So that that's the focus side to one side. Positive, I empower my mind every single day. That is non-negotiable. I read, I stay away from negativity. I don't watch negativity on social media. I don't watch negativity on TV. I don't watch anybody killing one another. I don't watch all of those things because I will just go in my subconscious. I don't get into any of that at all. Um, I pray, I talk to God, I go to church, I, I get away from the craziness, I go for a walk. During the day, sometimes I just tell the staff, I'm in a meeting, and Andrea and I just go in the, in the hills, go for a walk, just get away from the craziness. So that helps me to stay positive. It helps me to keep going mentally, to keep going. And productive is that I have a list for the list. <laughs> <laughs> God, you wouldn't believe, you would believe, I have a list. For the list for real listen i write everything down i plan everything out i everything has a date everything has a time i've got a planner it's on my in my shop my goal setting planner for champions yes i plan every single thing out in that in in my calendar even doing my nails is in the calendar like everything is in the calendar everything is detailed my whole week is structured um i i, I get very agitated when things are out of line so yeah. i have I, it's very structured for me outside of that structure it, if it's not in the structure it's not happening okay so i live very very structured and that helps me to stay positive productive and focused I'm very focused. <laughs> you heard it here first. So I've heard it before. So yeah, I, I, I sort of have some insight into that and, and, and it's true. And then in addition to that, um, health and well-being is very important, yeah. you know, and, you know, how as, and, you know, I have a theory, which I've talked about before, and um, that, you know, you're a driven person. You're an A-type personality, clearly. You know, I know that I am as well. So, you know, one of the things I've learned since being a business owner is that you really have to keep an eye on your health and well-being. Oh, yeah. Um, so, and and one of the things I want to share with the audience is how do very successful entrepreneurs manage their own health and well-being? 
know what I tell you what, Don, I've learned, you know, I've learned the hard way. Let me tell you, I've learned the hard way. And again, it goes back to that structure. So when I, uh, I take time, like on a Wednesday, like I have, I have structured time in the calendar. Wednesday morning, I have think, time to think. I don't want to talk to anybody. I tell my team I'm not available. It's in the calendar. They know it. Um, I, I sort of plan out things on a Sunday. So I don't, I'm not rushing on a Monday. Um, I take time off to have breakfast every day. I go downstairs. I make, somebody said to me, you actually make your own breakfast? Yes, I do. Yeah. Because that's the time for my husband and I to sit down and talk. And mm -hmm. I make my own breakfast. I try to cook as best as I can because that's healthier mm -hmm. than getting stuff, to, you know, buying and stuff. I try to not eat at night. I try to eat most of the more during the day. Next to my desk, I always have water and I always have fruits all day long. So Good. I keep hydrated all day. That's I get up and go for a walk. I get up the chair and I go for a walk. And as long as the sun out, I, my team working, I, I crack on. So I think I have learned over the years to look after me a lot more. And when my when I'm not listening, my body tells me I'm in pain or something. So my body says, get up. And so I, I just get up and go. So for me, it's structure. I guess come back to that structure. It's come back to willfully understanding that a friend of mine said to me, without your body, you don't have any, any, any business. And I've had to really deal with that for myself the hard way and realize that I need, I need to schedule time in for my health in my life. And, I, and that was hard for me, really, really hard for me. But now I just take off. Like I'm feeling tired. I'm gone. I'm canceling that meeting. I'm sorry. You ain't important than me. I gone. Yeah. I gone for a walk yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And I'm just gonna breathe. I want no phone. I want to see no. I want to see bush. I want to see animals. I want to see no people. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. It's true. And it's, it's, um, I was talking to somebody about, about gardening yesterday and sort of, you know, feeling the earth, you know, being out in nature, it's really, really important for your health and, and well being. So I love that. Thank you for, thank you for that. That's been amazing. Now, um, we've talked about the books which are available on, um, the website, carmelita.com and the shop section of that. You can get some free three chapters if you would like to sample the book or just buy the book that book you know I would just buy the book you know I've got the book so that's why I'm telling you to buy them as well how do people get hold of you if they want to you know go on your now if you do events you do retreats you do so much talk talk to us about that all you've got to do is go to camelita.com <laughs> the website listen I'll tell you I was somewhere today and I was thinking Chad Bob was asking me he said oh with the website it's nice just go to camelita.com there you can send me a message you can find all my social media handles. Huh? You can take my assessment. You can fill out the form. You can download a free, free chapters of the ebook. There's so much there. And we've shared, we've structured it well so that you could find things a lot quicker. Just go to camelita.com. If you want the ebooks, camelita.com forward slash free resources, camelitashop.com. You can find all the all the paid for all the paid ebooks. You want to know about coaching, it's there. You want to know about strategy sessions and business tips and you name it, it's all there. Just go to camelita.com. So that's really, really good. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, Carmelita. I am, um, I know, I know you. So, um, but I've learned a lot as well. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to share that with people. Do you have an actionable tip or takeaway so that our listeners can sort of like really think about, you know, the conversation mm. we've had today and take some action? I think my, this is my husband's tip. He's probably going to see I stole it from him. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna say, you know, if he will say it, if it is to be, it's up to me. Ooh. If it is to be, it's up to you. Nobody's responsible for the present condition of your life and nobody can change it. You alone can change it. There are only two things in life you can control, your attitude and your activity. So control it. Fantastic. I love that. Control your attitude and your activity. Thanks so much, Carmelita. As I said, it's been an absolute pleasure. That's it for the Dawn Jarvis show today. It's been a good one, hasn't it? So if you like it, share, subscribe, let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.